In this video, I'll be painting a Necron Scorpec Destroyer. Hello everyone, this is Jason from Force Hammer Gaming, and for this video, I'll be painting this really cool looking Necron Scorpec Destroyer. Looking forward to seeing how it turns out, so without further ado, let's get going. The first thing that I did prior to recording this video is prime the model using Lead Belcher Spray Paint. Next, as with my previous Necron models, I'm going to add a layer of Lead Belcher from the paint pot. The only areas that I won't paint with Lead Belcher from the pot is the blade and the back piece here. The reason that I add in a layer of Lead Belcher from the pot is because the pot paint is a little bit brighter, a little bit shinier than the Lead Belcher from the spray can. Admittedly, at a distance, you won't notice too much of a difference between the spray can and pot paint, but I would still prefer to do it anyways. Next we're going to paint the shoulder pieces using Brass Scorpion. Now we're going to use Abbott in Black to paint the center chest piece. Next, if there are any rock formations on your base, you can paint it with Dawnstone. Now we're going to use Corax White to paint the following areas. The eyes on the head, the gaps in the rib cage, the orbs on the arms and legs, and the blade.
So in the next few steps, I'm going to be adding in some shade, contrast, and technical paints. However, before I do that, I think this would be a good time to do some touch-ups and correct any errors that I may have made. Okay, I think it looks a bit cleaner now. Now we're going to apply a mixture that is 1 quarter contrast medium and 3 quarters black templar to the beam on the base and the areas of the staff that attach to the blade. Next we're going to apply a layer of Nuln Oil to all the areas that are painted in Lead Belcher. Next we're going to dry brush Brass Scorpion onto the symbol at the center of the chest. Next we're going to use Tesseract Glow on all the areas painted in Corax White. Just a quick reminder, before you use the Tesseract Glow, make sure that all the chemicals are mixed together so the bottle is this uniform neon green color. So with regards to the Necron Blade, in my opinion, what we see here for the blade is perfectly fine. 
However, if you really want to emphasize the swirling energy effect that's on the blade, for example, making a few areas of the blade darker than other areas of the blade, as seen in some uh, pictures online, then the first thing that we need to do is make a mixture that is about two-thirds contrast medium and one-third Dark Angel's Green. Okay, so just a few things to note before you move forward. First thing is, this mixture is a little bit watery, so it's going to take a little longer than usual to dry, so just be patient with that. Second thing is, as you saw, you want to try to get the blade to lay as horizontal as possible. The reason is because if you don't, if you stand it up like this, gravity is going to take the watery mixture down. It's going to pool at the bottom rather than it being a bit more spread out like this. The next thing to note is that if you want certain areas to be even darker, then after the first uh, pass dries, then you can always do a second pass to darken certain areas. Lastly, if your score pack destroyer model has more than one blade, so some of the models have the character holding a blade in each hand, you know, just do one blade at a time. You know, you don't want to rush this. Next, we're going to use Corax White to highlight this center line. You can kind of see it going through the blade here. And also, edge highlight the blade. So the next thing that we need to do is paint the base. And for that, we're going to use Corn Red for the top of the base, Abbott and Black for the side of the base, and Martian Iron Crust on top of the Corn Red.
Okay, the Martian iron crust is applied and now we just have to wait about 18 to 24 hours for it to dry. Alright, the Martian iron crust has fully dried. Just a quick note, if you want a really pronounced ground cracking effect like you see here, you should add a thick layer of the iron crust. If you want it less pronounced, you should add in a thinner layer. So, here's my completed Necron Scorpec Destroyer model, and as always, I wanted to provide some quick commentary on it. I think overall, this model turned out pretty decent. I will admit that this was one of the more difficult models I've assembled so far, particularly around the torso area. Also, this is the first time that I've tried painting a large Necron blade. I wanted to get the alternating colors on the blade to look similar to what's on the box. I wasn't really successful with that, but I still think what I've done looks okay. Of course, I'll definitely try to improve on painting these blades in the future. Anyways, that's the end of my video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and be sure to check out my other social media accounts in the description below. Until next time, this is Jason from Force Hammer Gaming, signing off.